So I'm here sorry. we are, I'm Toby sorry. and I. It's uh, it's the middle of well, towards the end of April, almost April twenty first today. Um, it is yes. eleven in the morning here, and it is seven o'clock there. Is that about seven o'clock in the evening? Yes, seven twenty one. Seven twenty one. All right. So I am going to get started right away because I know we're on the clock. Great. And sorry. we're going to look at. I have a couple of jams lined up. The first jam. Ooh. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. It's the instructions okay. say, we're going to look at some prompts. We're going to add an adjective and a noun of some kind and try to create an issue. Okay, so these are my issue cards. Okay. And just to refresh our memory, an issue is when we try to create a question that's a, a kind of provocative question. Um, mm -hmm. I am going to start the timer at 15 minutes. And okay. let's see, what are, I'm going to lay out my cards. I've got... Uh, my adjectives, you know, I'm going to stop the timer, man, because I don't have to use my timer <laughs> up on the on the setup. You can't, so, you can't do that. Uh, okay. Let's see. What was, so I got that. Then I've got my nouns. Okay. And where are my prompts gone? Uh, that's interesting. My prompts have disappeared. Let's see. They're probably hiding somewhere in another another packet. Oh, here they are. Okay. I did all this beforehand. I thought I was being so clever, you know, my prompts are over here. Okay. <laughs> you are. You look at all that. Right. It's all neatly. Okay. So, okay. Starting the timer. All right. So our first prompt is tidy or untidy. Are you a tidy person, Toby? Um, I'm an untidy person with a tidy person trying to get out. <laughs> so what do you, how does that affect so your life? I may, I, well, it, it, it's piles. So I make piles. Piles are the ideal midway between tidy and untidy. And, and, and so does each pile, working through piles. does each pile represent a project, like a work in progress? So you have yes. different piles, different work. Yes. In, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I yes. like that idea. I, um, I, but I, it's still I, ridiculous because why not just remove the piles? But it's this extraordinary thing. If I can't, I can't make the jump to digital. I still have to write longhand first, um, and so and I still refer to books for most of my research. So it becomes these absurdly little anachronistic piles, like some large book-eating rabbit is pooping everywhere and just leaving these piles of things. So if I come into your home in the near future, I will just have to, it'll be like a giant forest of paper and stacks of things. And magazines no, yeah, and but this is the thing, because there's also that Virgo clean part of me. They're neatly arranged, but they're stacks. Yes. But they're and certainly in my study. Yes. So there's a method and in that the way madness. I keep the rest of the house clean of anything. Yes. Mm. But there's also a laziness there because I should just clean them up. I should just do the things. Do you have anything against people that are excessively tidy or untidy? Yes. Uh, excessively tidy, yes. I do remember several of our ASL um, classmates having parents who would put plastic shrouds over furniture in rooms when it wasn't oh, being yeah. used. And then we were ne we, you weren't allowed in those rooms ever. And it, that seemed to me like a horrifying waste. There's something very creepy about that, like someone had just died. I've been to homes where they have it still yes. covered in plastic, and you have to sit on top of the plastic on the sofa. <laughs> what? Really? Yeah, yeah, because they're afraid oh, that you're going to scratch okay. the leather or something. So when the sofa was delivered, it had a plastic covering, and they just thought, oh, that's great. That'll keep and they it protected. Oh, yeah. my God. It always feels as if you're not and really that welcome there, like they were, they're expecting you to kind of yeah. leave as soon as possible. Exactly. That's, yeah. the, that's it. I I I you, once you, tried to live in a minimalist place and mm -hmm. um, didn't succeed. So what I did as a compromise, like yourself, I, I like piles. So I created enormous mm -hmm. amounts of of uh, cabinetry so that everything could get shoved behind the cabinets. So when you walk oh, in, brilliant, the, the place looks pretty Spotless, neat. But seemingly. if you open up any mm -hmm. cabinet, you know it all comes tumbling out. Do you think this says anything about who we are? Well, I have you heard an that this cabinet just stuffed full willy nilly of things. <laughs> I have heard, I have heard that this does represent your inner mind. 
somehow okay. that you are uh, expressing your inner mind in physical space uh, in a way that is uh, analogous. Okay. So you have lots of poopy piles and I have cabinets yeah. full of shit. <laughs> That's correct. I mean, neither of them speak particularly well to us, do they? They're both, they're both shitty things. Poopy or cabinets of shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My other prompt is imaginary friend. Have you ever had one or know anybody that ever had an imaginary friend? No. How about how about somebody who you think is your friend, but they're not really, and they're just pretending? Is that an imaginary <laughs> yes. friend? Okay. Yeah, 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 yes. And and, and why right. do they want yes, to be your friend? Is. Because they they want something you have, or they like to look down on you, or something? Yeah. Or they? Uh, well, I, I think the simple answer is they're not actually anyone's friend. Oh, I, think I see. It, it's simply that they 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 can see room for advantage with you. And then they move on and find someone else who gives them advantage. And as long as that advantage keeps paying out, you know, it's, it's usually a, I'm such an idiot that I've never really discovered these friends until they've exposed themselves, either because they decided that I'm actually not as interesting as I could have been. <laughs> or, so there's a honeymoon uh, in the period. sense that they were, yeah, in the sense of, of what they were looking for. There was a journalist friend of mine who was i seemed to be an eternal purveyor of stories because i was moving in these circles of sort of filmmaking and and it briefly intersected with um high, high society as well and and he used me for that thing and then once i said that's it you're not getting anything else out of me that was it he was gone hmm. so uh, and i i very much feel as though he every single friend was continually being judged and rated on how useful they were so I don't think it was just me being singled out. I think that's just how they saw friendship. Friendship so, was so, I mean, a that's... gateway for them to achieve stuff. Okay. So like, uh, uh, oh, I like that word gateway. I don't know what we can do with that. Sort of like a, mm -hmm. a, a gateway to, I don't know, to something. And then uh, it's like transactional, transactional yes. friend. It's a bit like a fair weather friend. I guess I sort of wonder yes. what the difference is between the fair weather. Hmm. Yeah. Well, fair weather friends, it's just when the going gets difficult or you need extra support that they're not there. That's, that's more, they can't offer that. Whereas the imaginary friend, I think would actually be willing to offer you all that help and assistance, but it would just come with a price. Oh, so that's the transactional. Maybe uh, I, d I don't. I don't know. Then again, usually those those imaginary friends just aren't very good at empathy. Full stop. So. I had a I had I had a friend like your, like the friend you describe, mm. where mm. I thought I thought he was my friend too, and he was just interested in the the networking, the other opportunities or connections. So, it sort mm. of makes me wonder if if. If friendship is sort of on a continuum at one extreme you've got friends who just kind of like you for just who you are and then others who like you for what mm -hmm. you can do for them and then people sort of mm -hmm. falling somewhere along that line um mm -hmm. hmm. i'm gonna try I mean, obviously to put... we lo we, look we, we like people who can help us as well right oh yeah so that's not but... yeah i suppose it's not a bad thing you know if you if you were really up front with someone and said look i'm i'm, I'm using you that's okay, right? Right, but I'm also here for all these other things too. I, th oh. That would probably be okay. It's just usually they're not. Yeah, why is it hard for people, I guess, just to be up front and say, "Yeah, I'm, I, I like you because you, you there's connections that you give me. <laughs> I don't, I don't really like you for yourself per se, but but I like what you can do for me, and that's great, right? And vice versa, maybe. You know, maybe this person is a really good um, source of, I, I had this um, colleague in school who mm. on, only called me whenever he needed something from me, just inf information usually. He was a consultant, so he would call me about the film okay. business. And, and that was it. I'd hear from him once a year and he'd ask me all these questions and then he was gone. And then I started to feel like, why am I answering this guy's questions? Like, do I, 
think that maybe there's a friendship at the end of this. So I just stopped. I just ignored the calls, right. you know, after a while. You know how right. you sort of put it out there. You think maybe something will come back. Like you have this sort of, maybe if I put it out there, the universe will return it to me. And then you discover it doesn't. You just keep putting it out there. Mm -hmm. you, no, the universe no. says, thanks, see ya. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to try doing um, some other things here. Okay. Cynical, a cynical fish out of water. Oh, okay. Well, mm. I think in a way we're sort well, of talking I mean, about, yeah. Go ahead. I mean, that's um, that's a. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but that's um, oh god, Doc Martin. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the idea of the city the you know the city guy who gets stranded in the the mm -hmm. Doc Hollywood, right? It's the city guy who gets stranded in the bucolic village that's representative of a, of an America or Britain that vanished years decades before, and uh, finds his cynical city ways challenged by the locals and their earnest openness oh that's interesting so basically anyone going to canada <laughs> i'm i'm now wondering but if I, there's... right but that's the yeah sorry no no i like the idea that the cynical person can't survive and in a place that's really earnest like like they go to an Amish farm or something and yeah. and they're having they're struggling because they they have a realistic view of the world <laughs> and everyone's yes, so trusting exactly. and, and caring or something. Right. Um mm -hmm. yes. No, I was also thinking that maybe there was a kind of a funny connection here where you have the imaginary friend who's sort of a fish out of water, and I don't know if it's if they're the cynical one or you're the cynical one, but uh you know, like people, what, why do people have imaginary friends? I mean, usually it's to, 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 I guess, to, to help them because something else in their life is traumatic or something, mm -hmm. or they're lonely or whatever. So mm -hmm. they, so they invent this. But I was imagining if you had an imaginary friend that you didn't, you didn't need and they just <laughs> showed up and, uh, and kept, uh, kept hassling you. Actually, that's like your conscience. Yep. If you were a really yep. cynical person and you had this sort of good inner nature that's hidden in there, it could be like your imaginary friend who's like really trying to to be helpful, but it's very irritating because they're your good conscience. Yeah. I mean, it could also be like Monsters, Inc. I mean, where do these, where do these imaginary friends go when you stop thinking of them? What if they oh. don't just vanish? What if they all go and congregate looking like a, a hopper painting of that bar? where and they're all the imaginary friends who people have forgotten <laughs> what if uh, imaginary friends got together like people's imaginary friends or would the imaginary friend create an imaginary friend oh boy so it's like mirrors of the mirrors right? um yeah so you stop talking to them therefore they start to feel lonely they go off and they create their own imaginary friend and soon there's this entire <laughs> population of imaginary friends living here. It sounds very Pixar. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just, my handwriting is terrible, but I'm doing it to remind mm -hmm. myself because I can type this up later. But I was also okay. thinking about um, uh, what if you never outgrow your imaginary friend i guess that's another possibility but i was also mm -hmm. just thinking about i kind of like the idea the imaginary friend isn't literally some kind of made up mm -hmm. thing but but rather that it is a friend who you think is a friend but the really okay. there's an illusion to it so i'm kind of interested about that uh i got two okay. minutes left so i'm trying to think what is the cynical fish out of water aspect of that um let me see if anything i mean if, if you have a player who goes into the situation and thinks they can play their way out of this bucolic setting that they have only to be rebuffed by people's genuineness and inability to play the sort of social games that he's relied upon for or he or she has relied upon for their entire lives 
before they. Um, that's an interesting one. Ditto with Mr. Smith goes to Washington. You do the you do the flip side of it. The non cynic who mm. shows others how far from the path they've gone. Hmm. I mean, that's actually the. The non cynic fish out of water makes me think of for some reason uh um elf. <laughs> you know, when he comes yeah, to yes, yeah, he, yeah. he comes to, to, to New York or whatever. Yeah. Um yeah. and then it's so sort it's of either like a, an innocent ingenue or a, a, a sort of a a cynical roué who well, I, I, are, are plunged into the opposite. I'm also thinking about, the, I just pulled up bedtime routine just to see if some other card would provide okay. something. And now I'm thinking of, of you know, you go to bed and just before bedtime, your imaginary friend fills your head with all sorts of horrible thoughts. <laughs> we did that nightmare stuff the other day, uh, a few days ago. Mm. And I just sort of see like, you know. Uh, well, oh, strangely or, enough, or, as it shows, you're, you what? are about a week ahead of everyone else. They all the newspapers and magazines now are talking about weird dreams from COVID. Okay. So now I'm going to add to this. Uh, what if you hated your imaginary friend? Like <laughs> you can't get this person mm. out of your yeah. out of your life, and they're like a really cynical. Uh, you know, in, in in a way, they sort of are a representation of yourself, right? Because well, um, well yeah, but sure, but what they're if like that filling your mind with let's, cynical let's... thoughts. <laughs> But why don't we take the two together? What if your imaginary friend has been using you? No. Okay. So let's take the thing that you like, which is the setup of here's a guy who's using you for your connections and things and everything else and whatnot. And it's an imaginary friend who you think, great, you're here to keep me company and entertained. And actually, no, he's using you. Mm -hmm. He has his own agenda. Hmm. Or what if you discover that you're really using himself? This is like uh, the sixth sense. What if you discover that you are the imaginary friend? <laughs> yes, there you go. Or what if you've been assigned someone else's imaginary friend by mistake? <laughs> okay, well, I can't keep up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna remember that. We're gonna write that down. <laughs> okay. uh, all right, cool. That was jam number one. Fifteen minutes. We got a lot of stuff well about done. imaginary friends. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm gonna reset. Okay.